I always found the process of preparing my meshes for baking to be incredibly tedious and error prone. You've got to duplicate the meshes, you rename them, you remove some edges, you move some stuff around, and then you play with symmetries and whatnot. And you have to make sure you don't mess with your UVs or that your normals stay in sync because otherwise it's a massive disaster. And then when you finally get to the baking process, you realize you made a mistake and you've got to go back and try to fix it and it's absolutely horrendous. And when you finally get it to work, your boss tells you the concept has changed and you've got to rework the geometry and then redo the entire process again. And this is why I try to automate this process as much as possible and the result is Gamerflow, a free Blender plugin that enables a more non-destructive approach to game assets creation. The link is in the description. The idea is that you only need to do the work once, and my plugin will generate the low and high poly meshes for you automatically, and in this video I'm going to show you how it works. So let's start by looking at what we've got in the scene. We've got a uh, little bucket, we've got a frog, the frog has a sculpted version and its uh, retopologized version. The bucket is made of multiple individual elements, and then on the right here we've got the uh, plugin window, which is where we're going to be doing a lot of the a lot of the work. But right now it's mostly grayed out, so we need to specify a working set. And the working set is just the collection you're working on, and in this case it's the bucket collection. So we just select it, and now we've got access to all those options. Uh, we're going to start by looking at what the plugin actually does, because right now it's it's not very useful. So we click on Make Low, and we see that we've got a nice lower poly version of the scene. We click on Make High, and we've got a pretty disgustingly high poly version of the scene. So we need that so that we can do some nice bakes in Substance Painter later. And you can see that everything here has been set up properly for a painter with underscore high and in the low poly you've got underscore low everywhere. And here you can easily move between the different sets. And once you're done you can also clear the generated sets and not have to worry about them taking a lot of uh, space in your file. There is obviously no magic in the way the uh, low poly uh, version is generated. There is no mesh optimizer that will do all, all the work for you. Like you, You'll have to do it yourself. You'll have to specify what you do not want to keep and what is important. But you only have to do it once. It's all non-destructive. So let's start by looking at modifiers. So modifiers can be made to be used only as a, in the high poly. And the way I did it is a little hacky. So you can you see this render button here, like the uh, use modifier during render button. If you disable it, then it means it's considered to be a high poly only modifier, which is not ideal, but it's the only way I could uh, could find to modify existing to use existing modifiers uh, as is. So what we've got here is we've got a bevel which is only for high poly. So we get this which uh, makes actually a big difference and we've got the subdivision which is also only for high poly the rest the mirroring we do want to keep and the weighted normals we also definitely want to keep and we can see that if we go in the low poly version like all those modifiers are gone and we're only left with the original mesh with nothing on it but in the high poly in the high poly we've got everything and it's a little bit more dense uh, in terms of a geometry, if you want to delete specific edges, we can look at this, this particular mesh. And you can see that it's got lots of yellow edges. So those edges are edges that will be that are marked to be dissolved later during the uh, low poly generation. So if you press Shift V, you can find uh, some pretty handy shortcuts to mark as high, high detail, painter detail, or regular detail. So high detail is anything you do not want to see. In the in the low poly mesh, painter detail is a little bit tricky to explain, but it's when you want to bake cylinders, but those bakes are never very very nice, so you kind of leave the edges for painter, but in the final mesh you delete them, and that's what the painter detail is. And regular detail is just a normal edge. So if you if you think you made a mistake by marking some edges as being high high detail, you just put them back with regular detail. We've also got stuff here for UVs, but we don't need to worry about them now. So if we look at the scene, you can see that we've 
here we're removing, we're asking to remove some edges here, and if we go back to object mode, we can look at the low poly, and indeed those edges are gone, which is exactly what we wanted. Then, let's go back here, you can see that we've got this little, those little grooves here, and those uh, screws, and we want them to be baked into the mesh. We, I do not want them to be visible, to be actual geometry. So the way we do this is we go to the Object tab, and here we've got loads more options. And here is the kind of bake, like the, the, the high poly bake menu. So I can add objects to be baked onto it. So for example here, I added screws as projected geometry. And then how do we deal with the frog, which is pretty similar. We've got this nice retopoed object, but we do want the bake to use the high poly that we made. So same, let's even delete it and start from scratch. So first we say do not include self, which means we do not want the low poly frog to be baked onto the low poly frog. What we do want is to get the high poly frog baked onto the low poly frog. And here we say which type, which type of object this is. There's Several types of objects. Standard is just any object that will be optimized and everything. Projected is meant for objects you do not want to see in the low poly, but will need to be will be used as base of the bake in the high poly. Decal is mostly the same. It's what we've got here for those uh, those grooves. So it's basically something you'd call a high poly mesh, but where the back faces are disabled. So when you bake it in uh, in substance. It, you won't have some nasty occlusion there, it's all just a baked decal. Then the final, uh, the final two modes are occluder, so this is only if you want, for example, to have a floor that makes occlusion or a wall behind that occludes some parts of the, uh, of the buckets for nice shadows. And then the ignored is for whatever else you might have inside your uh, working sets that you do not want to be processed. I do not know what that could be, but you never know. Now let's look at the uh, UV. Uh, so I've got a magic unwrap button, which I'm going to click. And then I'm going to click on show UV, which is going to show me the unwrapped uh, meshes for the first UDIM, which is going to be the bucket. If I click again, you can see I can choose between bucket and frog. Frog is not super interesting, not much that I want to do to it. But in the bucket, there are a few things that I would like to improve. First, I want the, uh, the bucket and the inside to have a nice little grid, because this is like, it could be straightened, it would be a lot better, there would be less distortion, it would be nicely aligned with the texels, and it would pack a lot better. Second, I would also like these to be uh, turned into a grid, and also I want to ensure that the uh, UV here, the, the, this island, is always aligned with my uh, wood grain texture that I want to use for it. Uh, this one we could probably probably orient it as well, I would maybe maybe keep it vertical, why not? So let's see how we can do this. So first we're gonna go over here, select all those triangles, all those uh, quads, select all those quads too, and then I'm just gonna click on gridify on. And now next time we unwrap it will be turned into a nice grid. Uh, I want to do this here as well, so select everything, ask for a gridification, uh, here I should ask for the UV to be vertical, so the orientation you can just ask for a specific edge, you say this edge, I want it in UV space to be vertical, and if you don't want anything you just set everything to neutral. So let's see how it is now, unwrap, show UVs, and that's already pretty good. So those two definitely worked. Uh, this worked as well. Uh, I said I could maybe set this one to vertical, so let's do that. And I also want to reduce the texel density here, so I'm going to set it to 0 0.25, apply, and now let's unwrap again, show the UVs, and it looks like it's all perfectly fine. This is the bottom of the bucket, so that's a lot better already. Like this is maybe... Uh, not not the most beautiful UVs. Let's see if it's nicer as a grid. Unwrap. No UVs. Hey, much, much better. 
So how how does it unwrap everything magically? Like first you you've got to place the seams yourself. There, there is no magic. It's just basically what you've got when you right click unwrap. Except it does extra stuff at the end. So each object in the object menu is going to have an unwrap method. If you do not want it to be auto unwrapped, you just click you just untick unwrap because maybe you've done an excellent job at unwrapping the mesh yourself and no amount of uh, auto unwrap will uh, will even come close, so you can do that. Then you can choose the different methods. They are the same as when you right-click unwrap. You've got always angle-based or conformal. I do not really understand what the difference is between the two, but you can choose. And then smoothing, which allows you to you know clean up a little bit. The It's the equivalent here in UV of minimize stretch with a number of iterations and weight. You can just put it to zero by default at 16, which is usually okay. And uh, then on the object, you can also say which UDIM it belongs to. So now that we've got some pretty nice UVs, we can just make the low poly, make the high poly, and export everything. So now in Painter, let's uh, have a look at our imported mesh. It, the mesh itself is perfectly fine. It looks exactly like the low poly we made. And we can see that we've got the two texture sets here, the bucket and the frog. It's all great. Let's have a go at the baking. So we set the high poly mesh, which is bucket high. Then we set NTL using, that's not necessarily super important, but nice to have. We can see here that we need to increase the projection distance. So let's go a bit crazy. Match, that should always be by mesh name. And in the ambient occlusion, we want to make sure self occlusion is, uh, is you know, ignore back faces by mesh name. And that should be it. Let's try a bake. So far, so good. We can see lots of uh, nice detail being projected, some nice ambient occlusion as well. Same on the frog. And yeah, as expected, perfect bake on the first try. And as an added bonus, we even have some nice ID maps. So we can easily set different materials to different parts of the object very easily. The ambient occlusion is also a pretty nice bake. The world space normal seems to be also perfectly fine. So uh, yeah, I think mission accomplished. So back in Blender, now that we know that the, uh, the, the mesh bakes nicely, we can look at the export. So what we have to do is just come here, select do we want light maps? Why not? And then click make export and we now have our export mesh which is pretty much the same geometry as the low poly except now the uh, bucket that was made of individual elements is now merged into one what we can do is look at how that's done so if we go back to the working set we can see that here we've got the bucket with children and all the children basically get merged with the uh, with the parent if we want to avoid that because for example something needs to be animated we can just come here and say untick merge with parents. If we make export again, we can see that this is again an individual element. But I don't want that, so I'm going to put it back. Oh, make export and done. We can see that uh, we tick light maps so we can have a look at them. And yep, that looks like light maps to me. So this is pretty much the same system as the regular auto UVs, except now everything is merged into a single UV space, which is maybe or maybe not desirable. I'll see later if that's really logical. And once you're done, you just have to click export. What you can do is you can export everything into a single file, which would make sense here, but if you wanted a specific file for the bucket and one for the, the frog, you could select the kit met method. And that's pretty much it. If you're exporting as a kit, one thing you can do is also play with anchors. So the way anchors work is you can make uh, an empty object, for example, which we can put here. And then we can say we take our frog and say that it's got an export anchor here on the empty. And when I make an export, is going to be magically teleported here, which can be useful sometimes, but maybe not, not very often. And that's pretty much it. We now have a very quick pipeline that whenever we need to make changes, we can just 
auto unwrap, make low, make high, export to painter, bake in painter, and just make the export and re-export whenever we want, which takes seconds instead of days. So that's it. Hopefully this tool will help some of you iterate on your assets a lot faster and remove most of the tedium associated with baking and substance. I know that I certainly couldn't work without it.